Well, hello, Nick the Vic here, M0 NTV, and welcome back to my shack and to another Fras uh, Virtual Club talk as we enter another lockdown. And uh, I've had a few days off this week, and one of the things I've been working on I thought might be of interest uh, to a few folks. Um, it's another antenna, but it's a very different antenna. Um, but first of all, why do I need another HF antenna? Haven't I already got enough already? Uh, well, yes, I have. Um, but the reason why is this. Now, I'm going to show you just a few seconds uh, video taken yesterday um, of the uh, LCD display on my Yaesu 991A. So have a listen. Uh, pay particular attention to the spectral display and the waterfall. See, look what you can see, those patterns, and just check out the S-meter reading. Right, well, horrible, isn't it? <laughs> terrible and it didn't used to be like that it didn't used to be like that and even though I live in a very built-up area um, you know, I've been fortunate really the three and a bit years I've been involved actively in amateur radio I haven't had a lot of QRM and uh, now I should say uh, if you are struggling with uh, a lot of kind of human generated uh, noise from our houses and all the myriad of electronic gadgets that we have in them um, then uh, do check out um, uh, Derek M0 WEO's uh, wonderful paper that he's written that he's going to have published um, soon, hopefully, um, about his uh, adventures in, in tracking down his QRM uh, and fixing it. Um, I did a, a little bit of that. Um, I, I must confess I haven't been quite as thorough as Derek, and I do suspect... Um, that very strongly that my QRM is not actually coming from my house, which makes it a bit more difficult. It's also complicated by the fact of who I am and the fact that I live in a house that comes with a job and I can't just decide to knock down walls or <laughs> pull out wiring or whatever. So it's a little bit more complicated for me. So I, I kind of gone down the route of how do I live with this and manage this? Um, so uh, what I decided I would investigate the idea of having a receive only antenna one that could switch in and out with the PTT. And um, I came across a bizarre uh, antenna that just seemed too good to be true, really. Um, uh, and it's called the Loop on Ground Antenna, or LOG, L-O-G, Loop on Ground Antenna. And uh, there's, a, there's a great uh, website by uh, Matt Roberts, KK5JY, and I'll put the, uh, the link down here. Uh, and he built one of these things and he analysed it and he's tested it and he's put all the results and things down there uh, with all the build instructions, uh, which is really helpful. Um, and on YouTube, actually, there's a, there's a British ham as well. I don't have his call sign, but he's, he's uh, from the north, I think, and he's done like a three-part um, video series in, in building one of these things and optimising it and getting it to work. So, I mean, what is it? Well, it is what it says. It is a loop of wire um, staked out on the lawn, literally on the ground. And you think, how on earth is that ever going to work? Um, well, you only have to judge for yourself. Um, so uh, let me just show you um, uh, what it looks like. Right, okay, so uh, so this is a, um, a, a diagram that comes from Matt's uh, web page. Uh, and as you can see, it's essentially just 60 foot of wire. And I use the um, Soto Beans heavy duty uh, uh, wire, which I usually use, which is the green kind of coated stuff. Um, and so uh, each, so it's about 18 meters, I suppose. Each leg is 15 foot, four and a half meters. Um, each side, and then you feed it um, at one corner. Uh, it does have some directionality, um, apparently, um, and so I, I kind of oriented mine pretty much as my main HF antenna, my NFED half wave, um, uh, is orientated. And um, uh, but you need to feed it with uh, an isolation transformer. 
and uh, and here's the isolation transformer here. Now it is a proper isolation transformer. There's no DC path between um, the, uh, uh, the 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 transceiver end and the actual uh, antenna end. So it is it is a true transformer. Um, and I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment when I show you um, the one that I built. But that's essentially it. Um, uh, it, it's, it is a square loop of wire on the ground with a little transformer which then goes to the shack. So how does this thing work? Well, it's a bit like uh, a beverage uh, antenna, uh, you know, the very famous receive-only antenna, um, except that the beverage is not on the ground, it's close to the ground, and it's earthed, whereas the, the loop on the ground um, uh, is on the ground and it has no earth uh, either. Um, I think it's because most of my, and well all of my antennas really, HF antennas, are vertical or at least have a substantial vertical element to them, like an inverted L, the N-fed half wave, which is the one I usually use. Um, and you know, verticals just pick up more QRM than, than horizontally uh, polarised antennas. I think that's uh, fair to say. Um, so this one, of course, is horizontally polarised. <laughs> it just happens to be lying flat on the ground. Um, so that's that's probably a, a, a large part of it. Um, and, uh, well, let me, uh, in true Blue Peter style, um, here's one I made earlier. So um, let me just show you. So this is the little uh, transformer box. So it's just a little weatherproof box I purchased from a famous auction website. Um, and I fitted, uh, as you can see there, uh, a chassis mount SO239, um, and, uh, which is obviously the connection to the, uh, to the shack, to your rig. Um, and then two uh, M5 bolts. Uh, one on either side, and those are the connection points for the loop itself. So we have a look inside of it. This is the um, the box. Now, the um, the little binocular ferrite in in the middle there is a type uh, at seventy three material, which I've not used before. Most of the time, I've got loads of uh, type forty three. Uh, but type seventy three is good because it it goes a lot lower in frequency. I think it's something like it's like 500 kilohertz, I think, up to up to 30 meg. So it spans the whole of the HF range, um, but it's better for the lower uh, frequencies. Whereas the 43, um, you'd be struggling to get down to 80 meters, uh, I think, um, as a wideband transformer with it. So it's type 73, uh, and I think that's 28 gauge uh, enameled copper wire that I used and some little crimp connectors. I didn't actually crimp those because the wires are so thin. I didn't know how well that would work. Um, so I just soldered those crimp connectors in. That seems to have worked quite well. So you'll see you've got on the, the rig side, which is the bottom of the picture where the, uh, uh, the SO239 comes through, uh, you've got one connection of, of that winding goes to the center pin there and the other connection just goes to the ground so it's effectively shorted out, really, um, uh, there. And then the, the other winding, um, the, uh, the, the connection goes to the two uh, pins um, or the two uh, bolts uh, for, the, uh, for the antenna to connect to, for the loop to connect to. Um, now, on, on uh, Matt Roberts' website, uh, he used 75 ohm coax. Um, so his impedance ratio was a bit different. So I um, uh, recalculated that. And actually, um, it, it, it turns out that you just have to add one extra winding, uh, which he actually accounts for on his, on his little diagram, actually. So instead of having uh, two turns um, on, on the uh, primary and uh, five turns on the secondary, like he does, you have two and six, which means... It's, it's a one to three voltage transformer. And of course the impedance is a square of it. So it's, it's a nine to one basically impedance uh, uh, transformation, which means effectively it will take uh, an impedance of 450 ohms and uh, transform that to 50 ohms. Uh, and I tested this. Um, uh, the way I tested it was I put 
two resistors in series that made uh, approximately 450 ohms across um, uh, those red uh, terminals. Uh, and I connected my antenna analyzer, my rig expert, to the uh, to the uh, the other end, <laughs> and uh, and sure enough, I got a one to one uh, uh, SWR uh, match. So it, it clearly works in the way that uh, it should. Um, and uh, so uh, now, actually, it, it it there's a there's a bottom obviously that goes on that clips into that, and then uh, you flip that over. Uh, and when it's installed, it looks a bit like this on this next photo. Um, so you see the uh, the actual loop. Uh, I crimped the, uh, the the wire ends of the loop, and they attach uh, on. They bolt on on, on there as well. Um, and then what you don't see here, but what I did at subsequently was weatherproof the whole thing. So uh, gunked it up with a load of that um, liquid electrical tape which is like tar <laughs> smells really bad <laughs> you're not supposed to breathe in the fumes um, but it's brilliant and it and it it, it, it sets uh, quite quickly and uh, that will keep the water out hopefully um, and the next photo I'm not even sure if you're gonna make it out but this is it on the lawn um, you you stake it out with tent pegs basically uh, and push them right in and I um, mean if you if this was going to be a long-term operation then basically you'd uh, you just leave it and the grass grows over it and it, it disappears in and you can mow over it and everything so they say um, so um, uh, we shall see but um, I was really just trying it out to see whether it would um, actually kind of work which brings me to the next bit does it actually work well yes it does um, amazingly well in fact and uh, so I'm going to play you first uh, uh, a video that I took yesterday. And um, this, uh, so this is taken uh, on, on eight, 80 meters and uh, the usual configuration, so it's my N-fed half wave antenna, my normal uh, transmit and receive uh, HF antenna um, with the, uh, the IPO on, so there's no, no gain or anything. And uh, and you'll see that familiar um, QRM all over this, which uh, makes it quite difficult and unpleasant to to listen to. Um, uh, and then what I do is I switch the attenuator on, and this rig has a 12 dB attenuation, and that helps a bit. But you'll still see on the waterfall that characteristic um, uh, diagonal lines going across there so and the problem is with the attenuator it just makes everything quieter now that does improve your signal to noise ratio but not enough I'm still getting too much noise coming in um, and then the second video um, you'll hear and see what the loop on the ground is like and uh, I, I use it on the IPO setting first but even then I switch in one of the preamps on the rig, the uh, the 10 dB preamp. And you'll see, even with the 10 dB preamp, I'd never normally run um, a preamp on 80 meters, but with this, because this uh, loop on the ground is very different, I, you can do that. And even then, it's, it's way better than having no preamp and an attenuator on my other antenna. So um, I'll let you look and, uh, and hear it for yourself. Watching it for uh, some CW signals from here one day, maybe. 
So, there you go. I think it's a keeper. <laughs> um, yeah, really pleased with that. Really pleased with that. It works on 40 metres as well, but I don't tend to suffer from the same QRM on 40 metres, so it's really only for 80. Uh, and it works on 160 as well, but I don't have any transmitting antenna for that. Um, but you can you can listen in. Um, so, fantastic, really. Um, and, you know, great to be able to have something that doesn't involve sticking more wire up in, in the air. So, um, just got to be careful not to trip over it or... <laughs> mow over it or anything in the meantime um, but yeah but but there it is so i hope you found that interesting and uh, and if you are um uh, suffering uh, as i was from from qrm on some of the lower bands then it might be worth having to play around with but i would again uh, recommend uh, matt roberts website it is very good and there's plenty of stuff uh, uh, there to get you going with it and indeed um, if you just um, Google it, you'll find some other sites as well. And as I said, those YouTube videos, which uh, were quite helpful. So until next time, stay safe. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, look after yourselves. 73 from M0NTV. Nick Levick out. Bye-bye.